and I hear that you haven't been in Albania since three years, so you have met a lo missed a lot of changes. That was me. <laughs> no, that was him. You, you I mean, he is avoiding to go this. <laughs> <laughs> the country has been changing tremendously uh, every year, and we actually, as Albanians, are very aware of the progress we have made. You made a, a summary of Albania, um, which was a closed country until 1990, and we were happy to not be part of the war, of course, but we were happier that uh, we came to the, uh, to the West as Albanians were looking uh, for that in, in years and centuries. Uh, after the World War II, Albania was um, a closed country and um, closed meant you couldn't go anywhere abroad. No one was allowed to come inside the country. And when it comes uh, today to, when you have that introduction and you have to speak on cultural democracy, um, it's many angles you can, uh, you can put in the perspective how things can change internally in the country and how that the cultural diplomacy actually help you, help other countries to uh, explore what Albanians are able to do and how big the country has changed. Um, just to change a little bit the environment, I would like, I have a three or four minutes video presentation, if I may. They hope, they, they promise they can help me to put that together. Madam Ambassador, I hope that you will be mentioning also wine, because this morning we agree okay. that we will have competition of the wines without loser only winners between Bulgaria, Croatia, uh, 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 <laughs> Georgia, <laughs> Georgia, <laughs> Kosovo, and now we have to include Albania into that. Yeah. Well, we have already wines in the embassy. We can be ready to start with that. <laughs> Good.
thought was interesting to, to to have you can leave it there we're still talking on Albania <laughs> uh, it, it was interesting to have the presentation if, if especially after uh, the way we are used to see our country to be presented coming from uh, uh, very close the communist time very dark periods people were not allowed as I said not only to move but on to speak freely to have opinions, to, to share with the world. And uh, in the last almost three decades now, this was one of the biggest changes in the country. 
Now, as we're speaking all cultural democr uh, uh, diplomacy today, I think we all agree that culture is very powerful and very significant for every country. We all come with, uh, with our heritage. We are ancient, some of our thousand years, some of us hundred years. Uh, we have uh, our tradition, our way, our uh, colors, our flags, our way of expressing love to the country, love to each other, in the way we prepare food, in the way we, we put together the, the folk events. Uh, now, the duty of, uh, of, of cultural democracy is what is the best way to present all of what we have to the world. Um, many times it's not easy. We have big countries who come with a lot of financial resources, uh, a lot of uh, history, background of how to do diplomacy. And they have institutes, I'm sure you have all heard of uh, institute, Italian Institute, Austrian, um, Goethe Institute, um, French Culture Institute. They all are present here in US, they are present in Albania, they are present everywhere in the world. If you see them from outside, you believe they work, um, is easy to do, they put the money, they can do it. I'm sure if we speak with the ambassadors, we always complain. One of us complained that doesn't have $2 million. Some of us complain that doesn't have $200,000. So at the end of the day, we all want to do more than actually we can do with our resources. Uh, this is why it's uh, important to also see how some small countries or countries that do not have the financial means go after uh, promoting their culture and what's the best way um, or some examples on how we survive in this very uh, very competitive environment uh, especially today with uh, with a lot of, of uh, communication means and the new technology everyone is it has all types of, of information sometimes new sometimes old sometimes uh, true sometimes not the point is how much on things like what you see it's really true representing the country and we don't go after promoting our culture per se saying you know we are special we are old we have traditions we also want to use each of us want to use it in our own interest on uh, saying even though sometimes we're small we can play a big role we can give a big example and uh, how we can exchange colors in the best interest of people in the best interest of, uh, of even security, in economic development, and how we can get the best of each other to see the world together uh, prosper. Now, I would um, like to mention a few uh, examples on how we go on the cultural diplomacy. I, I like the video. I hadn't seen that in some times, especially today. And they are each part of the video can be um, explained in itself on what we do to present our costumes, our uh, our culture, our UNESCO uh, sites, our uh, over 2,000 years old, uh, like the Codex of Berat. Um, I would take one example, the visit of, uh, of Pope Francis in Albania. Um, if you see it from in the first place, you believe he has been visiting many countries, and this is how he went also in Albania. It was not quite as simple. He decided to visit Albania as the first European country he was visiting. And the reason was that Albania is a showcase of, of religion tolerance in a way that he wanted to use that as example for other countries. And of course, that was a very, very powerful thing for us. And um, uh, he, we had hundreds of, of, of journalists, of internationals, local people who wanted to see him, uh, probably just saying hi in the streets, but one of the most powerful pictures was him talking to all the leaders of the several religions, which all together come very often in public events in Albania. They do it in every celebration we have. We're used to see them all together and cooperating. But when Pope Francis came in Albania, of course, that made the world news. Like how you have six different all dressed up religion all together talking to Pope Francis. There is a Muslim, 
There is a Christian, there is an Orthodox, there is a Bektashi. We use this also in another case. In uh, 215, beginning of the year, when uh, in the unfortunate case of bombing in France, and there was this silent walk on the street, we had our prime minister of the country who decided to walk together with the head of the four religions um, um, of Albania. And even four of them walking together really made the big news. Because that's one of the, one of the things that we believe it's, it's ours, but we can share with the world. We can share how in the way we live together, we can share, especially on the words of today, how we can, uh, we need to educate young people, the new generation, that this harmony is not there forever and it's not given. You have to work to keep that. You have to teach the young people how they can freely choose. And uh, if someone comes and say, oh, you are this or you are that, always there is a, you're a Muslim in a, in, a, in, a, in a Christian society, or you're a Christian in a Muslim society. People always get kind of protecting what they have. Uh, there are examples in many countries, but we have one of the examples which show like how since well, when, 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 when they are kids, when they go in the same schools, when they do business, when they do families together, and this is how the, the way, uh, and then can, our kids can freely choose, this is how the societies can accept everyone. Um, another example I wanted to, uh, uh, to present here, it was the European Championship in 2016. Albania was for the very first time particip participating with the team. It was really a big thing. If we mentioned before 1990, when Albania was closed, one of the few things everyone did was watching uh, soccer or European football. So it's a passion for everyone. When it's a European championships, if you go to Albania, there are cities, for example, in my city, we invited one of the German ambassador who witnessed to see that he has never seen as many German flags outside of Germany just because it's a European championship, because so many people are fans of that team. Albania never played. Now, this time, everyone was prepared when we say Albania, there are three million Albanians who live in Albania, but we believe there are another six million who live outside of the country. They came from all over the world not only to see the football matches, but they were all together in the street, having celebrations, asking the teams that they were playing on the same date, trying to make pictures and parties together in a time that other teams probably, they were having gang fights, they were having strong fights just because someone wanted to, to uh, because the people who were the fans of the football we're trying to fight each other in the street. So the examples, and for almost two or three weeks, you could see the celebration, the beautiful girls in the way they dress up. They were all over the European newspapers, and of course in the social media. So those are moments which are more powerful than everything you can do all together in, in money. Uh, it was an example mentioned here previously with the ambassador that uh, you can see big balls here that for some embassies cost one to two million dollars. Um, we can never do that. But um, there is an Albanian singer, Ermone Lajaho, who is very well known in the world. She was number one last year in, in, in England and the, as the best soprano. And she visited Washington as the uh, singer, the first singer of the, in the opera. So, of course, we use the opportunity. The night of the introduction and the big event they put together where they invited the embassy and the ambassador and they gave us the, 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 uh, the right to speak and to comment, it was one of the best nights I've had here in Washington. Because otherwise, we cannot put together those types of events. So really, the best uh, Albanians who are good in sports, who are good in music, who are good as, as singers, as actors, they are our best ambassadors. And together with that, um, one more uh, um, item I want to mention is one thing we use a lot, is especially here in the United States, 
is uh, Albanian diaspora. The first year that I came here around uh, in November, we have our national day. Um, and we tried to follow some of the events and we found out that it was impossible to follow all the events that would happen that last week of November in every state, in most of the states here in the United States, because of the way all the Albanian organization would celebrate together. So we tried to share on Facebook everyone's party and we counted only the parties which were around Albanian organizations. There were between 10 to 12,000 people celebrating in one or two nights. It was amazing to see how they put all the efforts together and they have children who uh, sing the song, who have the costumes, who, who speak the Albanian language, even though they are, they are uh, raised and educated here. And these are the best synergies we use to put our diplomacy and our culture for, forward. I would like to stop here and if you have any, any questions, because I can use examples, I can use, um, I thought probably it's better to do it this way. Mother Teresa. Uh, no, the uh, uh, what's the name? The, uh, in Teresa. India. Yeah, Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. That's right. She mentioned that from Kosovo and you. I want to know. Yeah. Um, I don't know about yeah. The the probably the 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 uh, when we ambassadors in the region sit together. Um, Every ambassador can speak a language which I can't. Like ambassador of Croatia, of Serbia, or Macedonia, they all speak, um, uh, uh, we used to call that Serbo-Croatian. <laughs> and it's, um, I, for me, as an ambassador of Albania, but as Albanian, I have never been able to speak the language. But the only ambassador I speak the same language is the ambassador of Kosovo because uh, we are Albanian, and uh, as Albanian nation, Mother Teresa was of, of, of uh, it is of Albanian heritage, and we both as the countries present her in our presentation as, you know, as ours. And it is one of the many examples I can mention. It is the icon, it is an example for many women. It's an example of tolerance in Albania. And of course, today is a sense that everyone in the world, you know, uh, uh, respects her. But it is part of our uh, pride and identity. And um, um, we specifically try to be uh, better in many cases, just because we we strongly feel we represent her. Thanks. Some more questions. Uh, thank you for the question. The uh, uh, Albania is uh, um, 
majority Muslim in a, in a sense of the population we did a few years ago. Um, Albanians come from one of the specifics, as I mentioned, I had the chance to mention, is the tradition of tolerance and coexistence and co-living together. Um, that's a history of hundreds of years. It's not new. But it, it, it kind of um, had an effect to this also that in Albania since 1967 until 1990, the religion was not allowed by law. So a lot of Albanians who claim part of Eve of the religion, they don't come from an experience of practicing. They come uh, an experience of easy uh, accepting the other religion. And Albania, it's true that three, four years ago, one was one of the biggest country of foreign fighters. And because we were part of the process of fighting terrorism like two, since two decades ago, we got a number of measures that brought the, the number of foreign fighters to zero in one and a half year. And in the last two years, we don't have any foreign fighters from Albania being part of this world. Um, I don't know the exact numbers. Uh, I don't see the increased number of Muslim schools in Albania. I, um, I would mention that Albania is a great example of especially the programs with young people, not only in Albania, but also regional programs. Uh, and we have put a special emphasis on educating, educating people and the young people on the new uh, tendencies of what you know, they call themselves Islam. So people know what Islam really is and what it uh, and the, the the claim for peace and all people living together and uh, the radicalization of today is not the reality of Islam. Um, we have not have internal issues on increasing radicalization or 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 examples and in Albania and that has not become at least it's not an issue today, but. What we are very uh, concerned and very um, focused on is not to take the situation for granted. We have been very active as part of the, uh, of the worldwide coalition, uh, fighting uh, extreme violent extremism, and uh, as a NATO member, of course, very active. And Albania, as other countries also in the region, very active on, on on cooperation, which has increased tremendously in the last years. Uh, I can mention as, as example that Albanian Prime Minister was visiting Belgrade uh, in 2015 after 68 years. An Albanian Prime Minister has been visiting Belgrade, which is less than one hour flight. And for the first time ever, we had a Serbian Prime Minister visiting Albania in 2016. And uh, the increase of cooperation, especially where we have a very dear program of young Albanian and Serbians coming together. So they go once in, in Serbia, and sometimes they visit Albania. They have been the best outspoken in both countries on how much people of the country can do together. But now uh, politics is, um, has tried hard to, to, to have, is, uh, there is a, um, what we call the Berlin Agenda that has asked countries in the region to work together, not only on, uh, uh, to work specifically on economic projects that go over two or three countries, and we can have better financial support on this. And it has been a very, very positive drive on cooperation in the countries. When I arrived here in, uh, in May 2015, one of the biggest news in, in, in media was that you had, for the first time, six prime ministers of Albania, Macedonia, Kosovo, Montenegro, uh, Serbia, and Bosnia-Herzegovina, all together in one table, in one picture. And trust me, that's not a news anymore. It has been year, three years now that that's a working table. And um, I saw the last picture I saw the prime ministers was this morning, because they were meeting uh, with prime minister in London. and. Um, this is, these are working tables, tables of cooperation, and tables that uh, we all believe are going to help, um, 
help the entire region to move forwards as EU members, as NATO members for the countries which are not there yet. If we don't have any more questions, let's thank you. Thank you.